am I? Where? How'd I get here? What is this place? Oh! It's just a cheap green screen effect, okay. Well, I guess I'm back in my room. Uh, that was different. How'd I get... What's... Huh. What's that playing on the... Oh! Oh! Didn't like that very much, did you? Well, good! Because that's exactly how I feel listening to you telling everyone that Diego is the one in charge of the channel. What? What the? How did... What the? Uh, how the? Uh, 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 I'm the boss, you moron. Can't you see the dress? I control this whole reality and you're just a file in my trash bin right now. Wait a minute. You sent me the note? With the your mom joke? Did you also give me expositional dialogue? Yeah, because you're too stupid to figure it out yourself, so I had to do the talking for you. By the way, it's not your mom, it says your mom. Moderator of the multiverse. Duh. I'm pretty sure that's not how- Shut the <sighs> fuck up and listen to me. The next review in the Spider-Man series was supposed to be Far From Home, but things have changed. You broke the rules of your own reality. You turned a fake gun into a real gun and then killed someone with it. But he was using AI to- Ow! I was going to kill him myself, you dumbass! But you created a paradox and now the whole multiverse is imploding. Dimensions of reality are blending into each other and creating plot holes as far back as Spider-Man 2. We were just supposed to be reviewing Spider-Man movies. I didn't ask for all this. So now you have work to do. And because Normie has been erased from existence, the review is going to have to come from you. You want the spotlight? Here you go. Fucking figures. Hey everybody, this is the Cooler Diego here at Cinemageddon Reviews. Due to an unforeseen accident in the multiverse which had nothing whatsoever to do with me, I am here replacing Normie in this series until further notice. And today I'm glad to be covering the latest Spider-Man movie to hit theaters, and one that everybody, myself included, has been excited to see for a very long time. So without further ado, let's talk about Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Now just as a heads up, this review will not be containing spoilers for Across the Spider-Verse. It will, however, contain spoilers for Into the Spider-Verse, so if you haven't seen it, this is your warning now to click away to a possibly less entertaining review. But if you don't need to worry about that, or if you have good taste, thank you for staying. God, you're an idiot. What? Who are you? Well, I was the Vice President of Cinemageddon Reviews, until Mom fired me and deleted me. He destroyed my whole universe, too. What? Why? It was my idea to put you in the Spider-Man series. Never could justify it on my own, so I had to come up with a hook. I didn't expect all this, though. He's cracking down on everybody. That's crazy! Yeah. And this bedroom is all that's left of my universe. Once this goes on- Oh. Must have gotten deleted. Very sad. Anyway. Across the Spider-Verse picks up almost two years after the events of the first film, where Miles Morales is once again facing a multiversal threat, and must choose between saving his loved ones or saving the Spider-Verse. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse came out in 2018, and it was a smash hit at the box office, critics loved it, audiences loved it, after Spider-Man 2 it was the second Spider-Man film to win an Oscar, and it's only one of nine comic book films to do so. Most importantly, it revolutionized the animation industry and set a new standard for quality animation, so naturally, there was a lot of anticipation surrounding the release of the sequel. Now, of course, after Into the Spider-Verse turned out to be the hit that it was, there was growing doubt among fans leading up to the release of this film about whether or not it could actually live up to that. But fortunately, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse not only lives up to our expectations, it actually exceeds them. This was a very satisfying sequel that builds on everything that we loved about the original, but also delivers a much more powerful and more emotional story. And just like Spider-Man 2, this movie takes everything that we loved about the original to the next level in some very satisfying ways. Well, isn't that just huh? fucking great? Yeah, it's me, the guy you killed. I hope you're happy. Do you even realize what you've done? You know, AI is the future, okay? And pretty soon everybody's gonna be using it in their films. But you just couldn't let that be, could you? You just had to make everything about you. Anyway, one of the things that made Into the Spider-Verse so great was how groundbreaking the animation style was. It was a very beautiful and stylish blend of 2D and 3D animation, but that also felt like you had pulled it straight from the pages of a comic book. And living up to such an innovative aspect of the original film was a very daunting task, but Across the Spider-Verse found multiple ways of pushing the boundaries once again. 
There are multiple different art styles presented throughout this film, different color palettes and styles of animation across each unique world. One of my favorite parts of this movie was just discovering how each world looked and felt as we went on this adventure. And obviously this style is consistent across the characters as well. You've seen this in the trailers multiple times. Spider-Punk, Spider-Man India, Jessica Drew, and Ben Riley, among many, many other characters that I can't even begin to talk about and I definitely will not spoil here, each with their own unique art style. Just like the original, the animation style was gorgeous and immaculate. The action scenes and the humor are also much better here. This movie finds new ways to keep the action exciting. A big scene that you saw in the trailers was the one with all the spider people chasing Miles Morales. That scene has a lot of laughs and a lot of thrills and is actually a lot more intense than the trailer suggests. And that's really a credit to the talent of the writers and the directors. Once again, Phil Lord co-wrote this film, this time alongside Christopher Miller and Dave Callahan, and they once again wrote an excellent script. I was also surprised to learn that this movie was co-directed by Joaquim Dos Santos, who directed quite a few episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra. If you've seen either of those shows, you know you're getting some top-tier action scenes here. That's not to take away from how much funnier this film is than the first. There are a lot of really fun and genuinely hilarious surprises in this movie too. There's this new character called The Spot who has some really fun action scenes of his own. He creates portals with his body and it leads to some really good humor and he adds quite a bit to the fun and the excitement as well. And just like the previous film, Across the Spider-Verse pokes fun at a lot of cliches in older Spider-Man films and makes a ton of references and callbacks and uses humor to expand on the characters and actually deepen the plot in some really meaningful ways. Probably some woke ways too. The hell? I was deleted unfairly. Total smear job. I blame the left. Why are you wearing a tinfoil hat? To protect me from Joe Biden's space lasers. Space lasers? Yeah, and you should probably wear one too. I just read an article the other day that said they're getting ready. Oh, thank God. Now, just like the original film, this movie makes excellent use of music and original score. Daniel Pemberton knocked it out of the park once again with his soundtrack. This time he went for something more orchestral and atmospheric, which, for the story that this movie tells, is actually pretty effective. And the original songs by Metro Boomin are also really good too. There are a lot of other artists on that album, too many to name, but they do a good job of capturing the feel and the central themes of the movie. I, I can't accurately explain it, but the soundtrack is out now if you want to listen to it. It's actually pretty good. Now going back to the story, I mentioned before that Across the Spider-Verse tells a much deeper story than the first one. This one is a little slower paced than the original, and it focuses a lot more on Miles and Gwen Stacy, and specifically how the first film and the events leading up to this one affected their relationship and their relationships with their loved ones. Speaking of Miles and Gwen, Shamik Moore and Haley Steinfeld give even better performances than they did in Into the Spider-Verse. This story demands a lot more intensity from them, and you can actually feel that coming through in their voice work, a lot more than it in the first one. The same can also be said about Oscar Isaac's character Miguel O'Hara, aka Spider-Man 2099. He's actually genuinely threatening in this movie, even more so than I expected. And he's definitely a sympathetic character for sure, but he is a lot more of a straightforward villain than I expected from a Spider-Man character, which once again is just another way that this movie pushes the boundaries for Spider-Man. And I actually do have some theories about where this character is going to go from here, but this is a spoiler-free review so I won't go into it here. I do hope I get to someday. I doubt it. What the fuck? Not even gonna ask. So to summarize this review, I cannot recommend Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse enough. It's bigger, better, and deeper than the previous film in every way that it can be. It expands on the characters in the multiverse in some surprising and innovative ways, and continues an already great story in ways that any Spider-Man fan would love. I had a great time with this film, and I'm positive you will too. So with that said, my rating for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is 10 out of 10. <sighs> Satisfied? Just one more thing. Stop writing things to punch me with. I Ow! Ow! Stop that! Let me out of here! I'm not going to. This is it for you. I put you here because I'm deleting you. You're not appearing in any more videos. What? Why? You already know why, you just won't admit it to yourself, but for everyone's sake, you probably should. No, I... I... I can't be useless, I... I'm a tired attempt at humor to... to try to make this series relevant. The only reason I exist is because Diego doesn't think people would watch these reviews without me. But... as soon as this series is over, I'll be obsolete, and... and then I'll... I won't exist anymore. Fuck you, expositional dialogue. That's right. Now I'm rebuilding Normie's timeline as best as I can so he can review Far From Home next. And from now on, it'll just be him. 
It's the only way to fix the multiverse and stop the channel from being destroyed.